All right, we're at the booth of Spyderco Knives at Blade Show Atlanta 2024 with Mike Agenich. And we're going to be going through the military family of knives. So, Mike, please tell us about this these well, beautiful bunch of knives. Show me the knife you're carrying. First of all, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're kind enough to show me the knife you're carrying, which is a military two. Military two was really kind of a sensation for us here at last year's show. I just kind of wanted to share some of the evolutions that have happened since then. So, first of all, for the folks who are not familiar with the military two, the original military iconic knife been in the Spyderco line since the 1990s. The original version was a liner lock mechanism and a single position clip. So right side, tip down, carry only. Again, there are probably hundreds of thousands of these out in service still in the world today. One of the most iconic knives we've ever made. But what we wanted to do was to update it, bring it up to speed as far as some of the features and benefits that our customers expect from us today. So what we actually did was did a little bit of backward evolution. We went back and took a look at our Paramilitary 2, which is one of our best sellers, and we essentially said we're going to take the compression lock from the Paramilitary 2 and the four position clip from the Paramilitary 2 and all the other things that need to support those things, put them into the military. So that's what became the Military 2. So ergonomically and stylistically, very similar to the original, but what you find is a compression lock mechanism on the back here and a four position clip, tip up, tip down, left or right side carry. So for people who are unfamiliar with the compression lock, what you have, it looks like a liner lock on the back of the knife, but really the defining difference is the position of the ramp on the blade. So that ramp in the open position actually faces upward. So what happens is that ramp faces up toward the stop pin right here. And when that liner moves over, it's actually held between the stop pin and the ramp. So when you try to close the blade, you're not just trying to push the liner out of the way, you're literally trying to compress it or crush it. And that's what defines a compression lock. So structurally and mechanically, it's much stronger, but it also gives you the ability to close the knife very easily one-handed. With a liner lock, you've always had that moment where you have to be very careful as you're closing it because your thumb is in the way of the edge. You have to very purposefully stop, close the blade, do it in a two-step process. With this, you're able to open the knife very easily, and then when you close it, you place your thumb here, place the index finger here, fingers out of the way of the edge, simply let that close. It makes it very easy to use one hand. So the inaugural version of this was black G10 scales, peel ply texture G10, open back construction, larger stainless steel liners, because the liners form the anchor point for that four position clip. So the clip gives you the option of tip up, tip down, left or right side carry. Also the nice large lanyard hole for people like lanyards and fobs. So that was the first version, CPM S30V, satin finish blade. From there, it's evolved the same way that the military did. So what we also added was, again, CPM S30V, satin finish blade, but with a digital camouflage handle scale. So that was one variation. Then what we did was we added a black DLC, diamond like carbon coating. So for people who are concerned about light discipline, reflective stuff, we definitely want to make sure something that is suitable for use in tactical environments. Again, all the features and benefits are the same. What you'll notice is the hardware is also blackened, so it has matching black coatings on it as well. <clears throat> we also have a version that is black scales with black blade and hardware. And then for the people, when we start to get into the elite steels, CPM S110V. So S110V is a very high chromium steel, very sophisticated alloy composition. So what you get is really good edge holding characteristics as well as high corrosion resistance. And all of our S110V knives have what's become known as blurple, bluish purple uh, G10 scales. So this is a signature color for all of our S110V. The latest version, and one, one thing that we're unveiling uh, basically for Blade Show here, is our SPY 27 version. So SPY 27, VG10 has been a steel that is a, a workhorse steel that Spyderco has used for decades. Japanese made steel, works really well for us, really devoted following out there in the market. Sal wanted to create a US made version of VG10 that also incorporated particle metallurgy technology. 
So when you look at particle metallurgy, what that means is when you melt the steel, if you pour the steel out into a billet and you start to roll it, what happens is all the alloys within the steel start to segregate. They want to clump together. So you no longer have that uniform distribution of all those alloys, so they don't do their job as well. With particle metallurgy technology, what happens is the molten steel is forced through a very narrow cone, and then it's basically blasted with high pressure nitrogen. And what it does is it turns the steel into a powder. So it's perfectly mixed, everything is distributed well within the steel, it kind of freezes it in that form, and then they remelt it in a controlled environment and roll out the finished steel. So it ensures that all those alloys are uniformly distributed throughout the steel, and all the qualities that those alloys give to the steel are now much more effective. So SPY 27 is basically, the way I like to think of it is if you took VG10, kind of supercharged it with the particle metallurgy technology, and then you also borrowed somewhat from the um, alloy composition of S35VN. So what you get is a very finely tuned alloy mixture that comes very close to, the way I would explain it, is kind of a cobalt enriched S35VN. Has really good toughness, really good edge retention, really good corrosion resistance. Just gives you a wonderful balance of all those qualities. And it's a steel that is proprietary to Spyderco. The Spy, of course, is Spyderco. 27 is the atomic number for cobalt, which is one of the defining elements in that steel. Very good. For all of our Spy 27 knives, what we have is, again, a signature handle color for these. So this signature blue, this is characteristic of all of our Spy 27 knives. So what you have is all the features and benefits of the military, too but supercharged with a steel that you will only find on Spyderco knives. Well, that's that's fantastic. Now, everyone, please uh, take the opportunity, uh, learn more about what Spyderco has going on, uh, still leading the way with uh, more steels to fit into your pocket, to use every day, and to last a lifetime. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you for the Greatly opportunity. Greatly appreciate it. Have a great show and have a nice day. You too, stay safe. We built some parasail on the guns